Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss about the questions that were asked in this company. And this question was shared by our subscribers. So let us get started without wasting much time. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. So before we proceed, let us thank a subscriber who has shared us this question so that it can be of help to others who are preparing. I would encourage all of you who are attending interviews, please share your questions so that it can help others. Now you can reach out to me or you can email me or you can text me whatever so the first question that was asked was how does performance recording process work okay so from technical perspective or from understanding perspective you need to know how it works so we all know if i go to tableau and you know under this if i go and start performance recording it will record start recording so i will so what does happen behind the screens? All of the interactivity that you are doing on the dashboard, like say you are applying filters, you are applying some parameter actions, you know, that interactivity you are doing, you know, your process of connecting to data, running the query, and you know, a loading of your dashboard, all of that is being worked behind the screen. So that's why when you start, and stop all of that process is being captured and it is creating a workbook. So you have to explain this in, in, a, in a detailed manner so that he understands that, okay, you know what is happening behind the screen. Okay, so that is how it works. So once it does, it creates a tableau workbook, right? So that allows us to identify where is the bottleneck, okay? So it allows us to read the interactivity that is happening on the dashboard. All activities like connecting to DB, uh, SQL query, execution time, data loading, dashboard lo loading, uh, parameters, and filter actions okay so once all of this is done a tableau workbook is created i've just noted it down so that it can help you in remembering what is extract refresh schedule process now what does this mean okay very simple and many of us know again here what is important knowing what is extract refresh is important knowing how to schedule is important and third and most important explaining to the interview how or what is the process of that okay now what does this mean first is your data connection or the or the way you are connecting to data is through an extract that is the first point right mm -hmm. so what does that mean so you are connected to extract something like this it has created an extract for you and it is connected somewhere or it is in the server you know and all now when you go to server you can create an extract there or you can create a job that will run at a specific time okay the process of running the job at a specific time at a uh, specific time is uh, a specific time for an extract is extract refresh, which means you are telling the system that, okay, boss, run the job at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. every day to check if I have new data or not. Based on that, with how you are configuring your file, the job will run and will bring new data into the file now what is what will happen when you run the job whatever the data is there in the existing extract all of that will get refreshed and will be will have the new uh, data that is coming from this extract that is extract refresh now what are annotations now many of us might know this but many of might uh, us might not have used it okay so if i go and uh, maybe create a simple chart i'm trying to create here okay order date and sales now this is our standard you know a bar chart and all now i want to add some points on the chart so for that purpose i can use the concept of annotations click on this and you will see an option called as annotate 
So here you have three options, mark, point, and area. You can use these three points and you can leverage it to add any highlights on the data. That is your annotation, okay? So the next question that was asked was how to handle null value which functions will you use now handling null values is an important part for any tableau developer so whenever you are writing a code or whenever you are developing a code it should be in a way that you are capturing all the exceptions or all the null values. Now one, what is that we can use? We can use if null function to handle that. Okay, we can use is null to handle that or we can also use zn function to handle our exceptions. So these are something that we need to do. So apart from this, what is that we can use? You can comment in the comment section and let me know. Okay, so these three I feel will fit in. Okay, but there is uh, an, uh, also an approach we can use in the calculation to handle this. Let me know if you know that concept, you can give an example. Let me see how many of you will be able to answer that. Okay, so next two question that was asked was, how do you achieve a dashboard interactivity? Now creating, see if I simply create this as a chart, this is a static chart with no interactivity, right? I will not be able to drill down. I will not be able to go into a further detail level or I will not be able to you know, watch it at a region level and all. I will not be able to do anything, which means what? whatever the chart that I have created here is a static chart, right? Now, how can we make that interactive? We can achieve interactivity in a dashboard through actions through filters etc okay so these are important and uh, through parameters through navigation so any point on the dashboard that you are adding that is helping you to click and do something that is an interactivity on the dashboard so you can talk about all of this whenever he is asking you such type of questions. Okay, now what is a dual axis and what is combined axis? Two different uh, you know, things that we need to know. Dual axis means what? Whenever we have multiple measures, okay, like say I have a, a profit and a sales. Okay, so when I bring it, okay, I have one measure for my sales and I have one measure for my profit. When I want to merge these two into one common axis that is a dual axis concept. How can we do? Add the measures, click on the second measure that is available and use a dual axis here. This will merge both of them. On the left side is your one axis and on the right side is your another axis, okay? So this is your concept of dual axis here, okay? So you see here blue color one is the profit one, this one, this is a sales. Okay, so I can just reduce the size just so that you can understand. This is dual access concept. Same thing if at all I want to do uh, for combined access, how will I do? Now the chart that gets generated with respect to this is little different, okay? I will just remove this. I'll take profit and I'll simply drop it on the axis that is available. Okay, sorry, I something missed it here. Uh, something happened. So when I try to bring this sales here, you will see two bar symbols when I drop it here. You know, it will create a side by side bar here, you see, with only one axis here. So this is your combined axis concept. Dual axis means you will have two axes. 
whereas combined access means you will have only one access which is a combined access okay so this is the difference between your dual access and combined access what is incremental refresh incremental refresh in the sense see when you're creating an extract okay based on the volume of data based on how what is the necessity you will decide whether it has to be a full refresh or an incremental refresh if i click on this you will have an option called as incremental refresh okay you have to click on this and you have to you know specify how do you want to do that okay and you can use it incremental means only new records will come into the extract whenever that is run whereas full refresh means you know it will bring all the records into the extract whenever it is running now sometimes that might uh, be feasible and that might be okay but when given when uh, the volume of data is huge that would not be recommended like say every day you are not you should not be loading or recreating a file which has millions of records instead of you can go for incremental refresh and you might bring in only new records that is incremental refresh okay what is context filter so context filter means a filter on a filter simple okay just keep it simple filter on a filtered data which means what first uh, a temp table will be created on top of that another fil filter will be applied to bring the results okay so that is your context filter like say you can remember the example of water filter you are actually passing the normal regular you know your bore water or unfiltered water but when it goes through it is filtering or, or with so many layers of data, which means you have so many layers there. You will add minerals, you will add, you will remove some pH value and all of that, you know, you will be doing. So same thing will be happening to your data, which means filter, first level of processing will be done on that of again, context filter. So this is all, you know, it is important here many times to show the relevant data in your dashboard. Okay, so no one will come to you and tell Rahul, you know, add context to the filter. It is our responsibility to understand how I'm getting the data, what type of data I'm getting data, and then you have to use it wisely. What is LOD and why is it used? So LODs are one of the most powerful calculations return uh, you know, to handle the data effectively okay so what does it mean lod means level of data we all know level of data which means what at what level you want your aggregations to be okay so you can fix that see when we are showing something on the dashboard it is most of the times it is an aggregated value right so what is your view level and what is your aggregation level based on that we can use our lods so now when you speak about that you can talk about your types of lods okay i think we have fixed include exclude and table level these are the types of LODs we have. Purpose, we can use uh, for many cases. Uh, like I think I have created a detailed video on this. Maybe you can watch it. That will help you in understanding. Okay, we can use it in filter shelf. We can use it on di uh, as a dimension. We can use it as a measure to find out overall total sales, to find out average, uh, to find out average across a specific dimension. We can use all of that, okay? To find the first you know interaction you have to find the last interaction all of that very powerful calculation we can use to derive it so next question was explain your project this is this question has always important okay so you always need to remember what type of project you are working in you know what is the problem statement in the project project that you are working what is the solution you have provided you know how much has it uh, helped users in uh, users after creating your dashboard you and what type of metrics you have created so 
so when you do when you remember all of this it it becomes an easy job for you to talk in interview okay always remember there can always be multiple types of questions or cross questions on each of this topic you are going to speak if you need help on this do connect with me and i can help you out okay so again what type of dashboard you have created there are drill down dashboards there are scorecard dashboards there are navigation dashboards uh, you know all of such type of dashboards are there you can talk about so just you know sort it out and have an answer for this questions always ready whenever you are going for interview i hope this video has helped you that's it from my side in this video see you in the next video till then bye bye and have a good day